man. Cutting pin blanks just makes a freaking mess. Welcome back to the workshop. Uh, another Monday. It's actually Saturday for me. It's normally when I do these recordings, a Saturday afternoon, it's kind of get everything put together. This week was a crazy one. I don't know if you guys are following me on Instagram or Facebook, the Knot and Burl page. Posted earlier this week, uh, 120 pen blanks that I worked on. So as promised, last week uh, we actually covered casting one of these, which was the ribbon blanks. We're going to take a look at how to turn a pen. I'm not going to get into full details on these. This is something I need to know from you guys, from those of you that are subscribed. Are you looking for this type of video where it's kind of a little bit of the process behind the scenes, but not a, an actual step-by-step -step tutorial? Or is that what you're looking for? Are you wanting a step-by-step? -step? Do you want to know drilling things out and gluing the tube in and, and all that kind of stuff? Let me know down in the comments which one you prefer. I can do one week like this, and then the following week I can do more of an in-depth tutorial, or possibly I can look at a different platform, uh, even do kind of a, a half and half. We'll see how it goes. All right, so let's get into the workshop and make a pen. So the pen body that I've decided to go with this time is actually called the Professor. It's a kit that I really like. The hardware on this kit, it's got a knurled feel to it. It's a little bit shorter pen. Some people prefer that. I myself, I like a longer pen, but I just really like the look of this one. The blank we're going to be working with this week is one of the ribbon blanks that I did from last week. It's a mix of a couple of different greens and blue, and then the white ribbons have been spread in and around. So another thing that I kind of like about this kit is there aren't a ton of parts to it. It's a brass tube, the the ink refill, the spring, then we've got the nib assembly, and finally the finial clip assembly. A few other things that I use, my tools, which a couple of different chisels that I use. Uh, I go with carbide tools. I know a lot of you guys are kind of your traditional turners. It's something I want to get into down the road, and I will. For the pens, it, this is just kind of where I started. It's where my comfort level is right now. The final thing that we're going to need is my micro mesh pads, and these go from a 1500 grit up to a 12,000 grit. So what I want to do next is we'll get this pen blank put into the chuck and then we'll drill it. The drilling process that I'm going to show here is a little new for me. I normally used to use my drill press and I had a little rig set up where I would clamp everything in. I've had a few comments not only on one of my videos but also just a couple of emails and stuff through Facebook and a couple of different groups that I belong to telling me I should be drilling on my lathe that would just make sure that I've got everything centered. So that's the process we're going to follow this week is I'm actually going to drill this on the lathe which I can put my drill chuck on there and my four jaw chuck to hold the blank and then we'll get this drilled, glue our tube in, move on from there. Now there's there's one thing that you're going to see me do here and it's I, I have to cut this blank by hand. So I have to use a handsaw on this because unfortunately during the process of cutting and polishing 120 pen blanks, my bandsaw has died again. There's a little rubber belt in there, and I just... This this will be the third one that I've had to buy now. So I, I think it's time to find a new bandsaw, something a little bigger, that can kind of handle the capacity. Anyways, let's uh, get the blank cut, get it drilled, and we'll go from there. Okay, so that's it for our blank. Everything's ready to go now. Tube's been sanded. We then put it on the drill press and I use what's called a, a pen mill and that levels out both of our ends. Now there is another method for this which is actually done on the disc sander where you can level these out. I haven't gotten to using that yet. I actually don't have one. I do have a, a disc sander but I don't have the little jig that goes on it. 
I'm gonna get one and try both of them out and just kind of see which one I like best. I've used a pen mill since I started making pens and I've never seemed to have any problems with it. They, they work fine. And with a nice level cut on them, but I also keep mine sharp. Usually after every second or third pen, I take that little mill body piece, that little thick round piece you saw me putting on, and I sharpen it with 600 and a 1000 diamond card. All right, so next we're gonna get this put on to the lathe. I use a pen mandrel for doing my turning still. I haven't had any issues with it yet. I bent one of the pen mandrel shafts when I was first starting out, had to buy a second one. I'm working with this one now. It doesn't seem to cause me any problems. And the biggest reason I haven't switched over between centers yet is just because of the amount of bushings that I would have to replace. These are my bushings. So this whole thing right now up to about here is full of different bushings for the various pens that I've turned. Some of them I don't do anymore so I can get rid of a few of them, but I will get set up for turning between centers down the road sometime. Again, it's all a learning process. Uh, so let's get this set up on the pen mandrel, get the bushings into it and start turning it down to the profile that we need for this pen. So that's got the final shape down. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I started at a 180 um, and I don't go all the way down to the bushings with my tools. I found I'm better off going almost down and then doing my final shaping with sandpaper. It makes my pens a little nicer. They match up with the ends a lot better. So when I'm actually pushing the pen together, the parts from the kit line up a lot nicer to the actual tube or to the actual the the blank itself once it's been turned so when i'm doing my sanding i start out with 120 grit i then move on to 180 from there i go to 220 and then i go to 320 and that's all my dry sanding once i'm done this i now move on to my uh, micro mesh the micro mesh like i said before goes from 1500 all the way to 12,000. so that's our next step on this one and then we'll get it all pushed together All right, so that's the end of this one. I hope you guys were able to pick up something out of it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments or maybe some suggestions, go ahead and leave them down below in the comments. I try to answer everybody. If you haven't subscribed already, please go ahead and click that subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up for me for this video. Even hit the thumbs down if there's something that you just don't agree with. Hope to see you guys next time. And I, you know, I, I gotta find a better way of closing these things instead of doing the same thing every time. I'll figure something out. Uh, but anyways, YouTube recommends this video for you next, or you can also click here to subscribe to my channel. Hope to see you guys next time.